Yo, how about it? <laughs> All right, so. So what do you think? Here's our picture. Right? So if it's isosceles, we don't probably need to worry too much about this stuff. But if it's isosceles, I guess we can do that, right? Yeah. Okay, so where do we start? Got a picture. Label it. Got to label it, don't we? Bang. Okay, so if we want to find the dimensions of the largest isosceles triangle inscribed in a circle of radius r, well, by largest, what are we probably talking about? Area. Yeah. Right. So we'll assume they mean area on this one. All right. So we need to put in the variables for area. Well, what what is area of a triangle? One half base times height. Okay. So base we'll just call. Well, how about if we just call it B? I guess. Huh? Just do it like that. So where are those going to show up on here then? On the triangle. Okay. So base obviously is here. Height is obviously there, but we got two independent variables. What do we need? Secondary equation? Yeah, we need a secondary equation or some equation of constraint, don't we? Yeah. Okay, with no constraints, we just make the triangle infinitely big. What is the constraint here? Yeah, radius, radius r. Okay, it's inscribed in the circle, and the circle has a radius of r, so it's got to have an r, a capital R, right? The constant r. It's got to have an r in it. That's the constraint. So what do you think? What do you think? Stuart, you're kind of a triangle man. What do you think? You got a triangle for us here? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a triangle man. I want a triangle. It's a triangle. I don't know. I'm kind of still sick. My brain really works. Oh, OK. Sorry. Fair enough. <laughs> Any suggestions? Okay, yeah, so so how about, let's just try this. How about if we go, is that about the center right there ish? Something like that? Okay. So that, that's, that would be our capital R, wouldn't it? Yeah. We've got to come up with some relationship. So if I, if we did something like that, now I've got this right triangle down. Right. Does that make sense? Yep. Does that make sense? Quick question. Mm -hmm. Why can't we just put the, <laughs> the radius of R as the, like, instead of having it diagonal, have it like run parallel or flush with the bottom of the triangle. Because <coughs> because this this doesn't necessarily go through the radius. This doesn't have to be a diameter, right? I mean that this could be clear down here. We don't know oh, where it is. Okay. Right. It just so happens to be close to the middle of the circle. Right. It's close, but but we don't know that it is. I mean it's possible that it is, yeah. but we don't know. Right? So we have to account at least for the possibility that it's not. Because it's probably not. All right, so we got to come up with, so this is, what, what's this distance right here then? One half base. Okay. <coughs> That's convenient. There's our one half base right there, isn't it? Yeah. Why is that basic? Because isn't this whole thing the base of the big blue triangle? Oh, yeah. Right? Does that make sense? So this is, that's our base, right? So what's this going to be then? If this and this is height. So what's what's that distance right there? R minus Close. H minus R, right? Everybody see that? There's H minus R. And so I've got a right triangle. I have a Pythagorean relationship here then, right? So if I write my secondary equation, then it's just going to look like h, the quantity h minus r squared plus, whoops, plus h 
plus v over 2 squared equals r squared. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay. Suggestions? Well, there, we don't need numbers. There's no, I mean, we could have said that the radius of the of the circle is 10 or 4 or something, but we just said it. that's a constant, right? Can we solve for b over 2? Yeah, so we got to solve for one of those in terms of the other. Any suggestions which one we want to solve for? Might as well just do b over 2. Why not? Right? So if we do b over 2, if I isolate that, b over 2 squared equals, whoops, r squared, well, minus, r squared minus the quantity h minus r squared. So this is, if I FOIL that out, or if I expand that out, that's just what, h squared minus 2hr plus r squared. And I'm subtracting the whole thing. Right, so what's going to happen there? The r's are going to cancel. Yeah, the r's are going to cancel. Good. That's fantastic. So those cancel. When I distribute that, I just get 2hr minus h squared. Did I distribute the negative? Okay, so there's our uh, substitution equation, right? b over 2 would equal the square root of 2hr minus h squared. So this one might have looked like it was going to be a little easier than the other ones that you've been doing. Yeah. The, the volumes, but it's actually not. Because in the volumes, we always had a radius squared that we could make a direct substitution on without having to involve a radical. Right? This time, unfortunately, we have to involve a radical. So if we substitute this for that, then we just end up with area equals this stuff times h, right? Make sense? Yep. And so really now we're down to a point, how many variables are there in that equation? One. Does that make sense? Yeah. How yeah. many variables are in that? Yeah. What's, what's the variable? <coughs> H. Not R though, right? Right. Right. Okay. Because R is the radius of the sphere. Wait, so, so we got rid of the, the base variable, right? We, well, we solve for we solve for b in terms of h from this equation right here. Just isolate for that. So we just yeah. turn that. So, so we could just. Is, isn't a squared under the radical and not r squared? Yeah. Bottom left is y. Say it again. And the bottom should be h. Squared. Oh, h squared. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. 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 Even right there where it says h squared. <laughs> There we go. Okay, so then we just made that substitution. Square root is made that substitution. Okay, so what's our domain going to be then? The independent variable is h. What's the what's the smallest reasonably that h could be? I mean, technically it could go towards zero. But we had this discussion earlier, right? It really doesn't make any sense for us to drag these points up here, does it? Because then for the same base, we just would have a smaller height. That makes sense? Yeah. So we know that the very smallest it would ever be it would be the equator, right? Would be the diagonal, the horizontal diagonal through this. So it would be what, R? Okay. And then the biggest it would be 2R. So in other words, we could drag these points. I think I could even do that, too. If I grab this guy right here, or I guess I can't, but kind of, I know what I can do. Here, I can do this. Look, I could drag this guy way down here like this. See what I'm saying? So it gets tall and skinny. I could keep going until it becomes really tall, like a needle. And at that point, the height would just be the diameter of the the circle, right? Okay. 
Okay, so now it's just a table phone. Right? Just different. And that's kind of a hard to rid of it. It's got that radical in it. Yeah. Or it's a pain, you know, painful one to do, but it's we can do it. So <clears throat> this is good practice. Differentiating here. We have A of H. <laughs> So what's a prime of h? Stare at that for a second. What's what's the just differentiating is gonna follow the rules. What's the rule that applies there? What's the first rule that applies in that derivative? Chain rule. No. Product rule, right? It's a product of two factors. Now when I'm taking the derivative in the process of doing that, that, that product rule, I'm gonna to have to differentiate with the chain rule. But from the outermost level, it's just a, just a product, right? So the derivative then is just going to be the square root times, right, that one times the derivative of that one. So the square root of all that junk times the derivative of h, which is 1. Say what? Right, because I've got two products here. Look, I've got two factors. I've got that factor and that factor. So if I do the yellow times the derivative of the green, there it is, right? Plus the green times the derivative of the yellow. Now that's a little bit trickier. That's where we got to use chain rule, right? What, what do we always do with the square root? One half power. So the derivative of hand to the one half is hand to the minus one half. times the derivative of hand. So what's the derivative of that stuff in there with respect to h? Two Good. Okay. We can do a couple nice things. We could distribute that one half through, cancel both of those, right? So that's still a minus there. Does that make sense? What about the two, 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 two HR? Can't do that because oh. this is this stuff well, is in bottom, captured yeah. inside oh, okay. a radical. Okay. But we could put that on the bottom and make this look a little better. So are we gonna want to do a second derivative? No. No. <laughs> we could. Too much. Let's, let's do it. <laughs> no, we're not gonna be really cheaper this time. We don't have to so then we're gonna do a plus. That stays on top. Right? And that stuff stays on top. So I've got an H times the quantity R minus H, because those twos got canceled. And I distributed the one half through. Right? On the bottom, I've got a square root. Okay, does that make sense? So, okay, so where, we got to find all our critical numbers. Is this undefined anywhere? Yeah. Where's it undefined? Square root on the bottom. Yeah, when the square root on the bottom is negative, first of all, I suppose, right? Okay, could it be... Could that be, well, where would that be? 2HR minus H squared. Could that ever be, let's look at that. Let's just focus on that for a second. That has to be greater than zero, doesn't it? Because it can't even equal zero on the bottom. Right? So I could, what, what do you do with something like there's lots of good math involved in these, lots of good review of pre-calculus and whatnot. What, what do you do when you're solving? This is, we have, you know, this is, you haven't done this probably in a long time. How do you solve a, uh, an, an inequality like that that's quadratic? Linear ones are pretty easy, but this is a little tougher. It doesn't involve, like, flipping that sign. Uh, 
possibly. $30. Yeah, what about that? What about that? Okay, now the problem here is we H is a variable, right? Yes. So we can't divide both sides by a variable. We can divide by a constant, but if we divide by a variable, we're going to lose solutions. Now, one thing that might be useful to do here would be to multiply uh, both sides by negative 1. Now, what's that going to do, though? If I multiply both sides of an inequality, it's going to flip the sign, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so if I flip this around, where I get, if I multiply everything by negative 1, h is my independent variable, right? So I get h squared minus, I really should probably write it that way, 2rh is less than 0, okay? There's a couple ways you can look at this. Well, one thing you could do is you could factor it. Okay, we could factor this and say this factors into h times h minus 2r. We're just going to look for all the cases where that would be negative. Now, for that to be negative, for that product to be negative, what has to be true? For a product to be negative, one has to be negative and one has to be positive, right? So now think about that for a second. Can H itself be negative? No, H is a height, right? That can't be negative. But this one could be negative. Right? And so really, that's kind of tricky, isn't it? Then all we're really asking is, for the product to be negative, we've reduced this to an easier inequality. Really, it just reduces to the inequality. That's true when h minus 2r is negative. Why can the radius be negative? Or r, or whatever. Well, it, it, it can't be. But, but the difference of the two yeah. terms could be. Yeah. Oh. Right? Okay. So then that would happen any time that... Let's see something here. Yes. Hang on one sec. So that's going to be 2r minus 8. Because that's, <laughs> that seems like that's going to be just when h is less than 2r, which is all the time. Which is all the time. So something's, something's not quite right. Something. Something went wrong. Didn't, something went wrong. Yeah. So that has to be. Oh, okay. No, sorry. We're solving for the domain. That's right. Right. We're not solving for the for the conditions that can't be. We're solving for the conditions that can be. Right. Because see what we did. We said that everything in the purple bubble must be greater than zero. Yeah. Right. So. So yeah, that makes sense. H has to be less than two R. Okay, but in our domain, yeah. it is, except for the one case where h is actually equal to 2r, yeah. right? Does that make sense? So, so the, all we have to do here is just go back to our domain, and we only have to make one. Well, in our table, the only part that, that we're going to get for a critical point there is, is 2r, but is that conceivably going to be a, a solution no. for us? No, no way, right? That's the needle no. one, and that's not going to give us any area at all. So. So there's two things we could do. We could either add that as a critical number, or what I would probably just do is go back and just modify our domain a little bit. And do what instead? Make it parentheses. Yeah, just go like that. Yeah. Right? Let's go. Does that make sense? Either way, it doesn't matter. On our table, we could put that in, but we know it's not going to be a solution anyway. Right? So now let's maybe make our table. So that's, that, that, well, we've got to find the other critical number. That's where we get critical numbers where the derivative is undefined. Where are we going to get critical numbers where it's equal to zero? And I'm going to need a new page for this one, right? Because that's all we really did. We found one variety of critical numbers. We've got to find the other variety. Yeah. Okay, so where is that going to equal zero? When all equals zero. Okay, yeah, when it all equals zero. So if, if I set this whole thing equal to zero, I guess is what I'm saying. If I set that equal to zero, how am I going to how am I going to solve that? What's 
a couple ways I could go about this. You could subtract it and then like cross multiply. <clears throat> okay, I, I could I could just subtract this term to the other side and cross multiply, right? Yeah. The other thing I could do is I could get a common denominator. I could multiply this one by the square root of 2hr minus h squared over itself yeah. to get a common denominator and then just set the numerator equal to zero. I'm going to get the same thing either way though, aren't I? Yeah. Right? You know, and we will, I'll show you that if we have yeah, time. I see, I got it. So if I just subtract this to the other side though, I'm just going to get then square root 2hr minus h squared equals negative h times r minus h over the square root, right? Right? Okay, how about if, well, okay, so then if we cross multiply, that's going to get rid of the square root, so it's 2 hr minus h squared equals, if I distribute the negative h, I'm just going to get a positive h squared minus hr, right? Yes. And so if I gather everything on one side, put this in standard form, probably gather it on the right side, I'm going to end up with a 2h squared. If I subtract 2hr, I'm going to get minus 3hr. Everybody see that? Okay, now what's my independent variable? So how do I solve this equation? How do you solve a quadratic equation in standard form? Factor. We can. And we can, can't we? Take out H. H. Yeah. So I can factor out an H, leaving me with 2H minus 3R. Yeah. And so what are my solutions and therefore my critical numbers? h equals 0. Is that probably a good solution for us? No. no. Probably not, right? It's not even in our domain anyway, is yeah. it? Or, what about this one? Mm. 3 halves r, isn't it? If I set this one equal to 0 and solve, I'll add 3r and divide by 2. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now that seems pretty good. I like that. Right? Doesn't that sound about right? So there's our, there's our critical number, the only critical number in our domain. We don't even want to touch the second derivative of the 10-foot pole here, so we're just going to make our table. We'll just use the first derivative test. So H, uh, what are we doing, area? Oh, that's kind of a weird Anarchy A. And our domain goes from, we said, from R up to but not including 2R. So we had one critical number, which was 3 halves R, which was a 0 of the first derivative. So what do we do? Yeah, but what do, what do we do with the first derivative test? Now we have to check our boundaries. Yeah, test points, right? Test point. So there's our derivative. There's a prime right here. So let's test some points. Well, why not? We've already got a point right here. Why not just test R? That's probably a good one. If I plug R in, what is a prime of R going to give us? Let's see. That's going to give us 2 R squared minus R squared. <clears throat> Okay, so just, yeah, square root of just r squared, right? Which would just be r. Everybody agree? So the first term gives us r. Second term is going to give us h, oh, excuse me, it's going to be an r. So r times 0 over something that's not, that's like not 0, right? So but what's that going to, what's that going to be? 0 divided by something non-zero is 0. So we get r for our answer, right? Okay, so that's, more importantly, that's positive. You run out of time. But all we'd have to do here is pick something like maybe, I don't know, what could we pick? Like, uh, um, yeah, something like, 
some number between three halves and two times r and plug that in. So five, five, six, something, or no, six, sorry, what am I going to do? Six fifths will work. Nine fifths, something like that. If I plug that in, all we got to do is just see what the sign's going to be. What's this term going to be? If I plug in something like that, I'm going to get two, it's going to be positive, right? Yeah. It's the square root. Over here, I'm going to get positive on the bottom. What about the top? Nine fifths, r minus nine fifths, r is going to be negative, negative times nine fifths negative. is negative. Uh, okay, right. So it's going to be negative, isn't it? Right. Now it works because we're going from increasing to decreasing first derivative. Right. So it's going to go like that. Yeah. Which is what we wanted. We wanted a maximum. Right? So we got it. It only took us half an hour. Yeah, whatever.